Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about proposals, specifically the book proposal project. And also uh, to remind you that this book proposal is just one part of a bigger project. Uh, from here, we'll have the uh, some sample chapters from the book that we're proposing here, as well as a PowerPoint presentation about this proposal. And then later on, there'll also be a YouTube video uh, that fits in with the same theme. So. I just say all that because I really want you to put some thought into uh, what you want to propose because you'll be uh, stuck with it for a while. And I'd rather for you that that be a pleasant experience rather than uh, something you dread. So it's it's just totally up to you. You sort of create your own uh, project. So if you don't like what you end up with, it's kind of your fault. So anyway, uh, first off, a little bit about proposals. Uh, there are, of course, many different kinds, as you uh, read about in the book. I, I don't see any reason to rehash that here, uh, except to say that there are they're, they're very, very common in business, the business world. Uh, even in the academic world, we do proposals all the time. Uh, we do grant proposals. If we want to uh, go on a sabbatical, we have to write a proposal uh, basically saying, <laughs> here's why you should give me the sabbatical. I'm going to be doing all this uh, research or or uh, professional development or whatever it is, uh, you basically have to make a case that, you know, your worth or whatever you're proposing is worth the money, the time, the resources uh, of your company or your uh, university, or whatever it is. It's, uh, you know, just an absolutely crucial way uh, to get it, to get ahead or to secure the future of your business. And I think it really shows you the difference between uh, you know, a successful business in an unsuccessful business, a lot of the times uh, this other business that's failing, uh, maybe they maybe they got a lot of talent, a lot of skill, you know, they're good good people or whatever. But if they don't have this skill of being able to write really good proposals and get more uh, more work that way, uh, you know they won't have the business and they'll go under. So, uh, and I'm trying to scare you here, just saying that if if you take the time to learn about proposals practice these skills, you really develop them. Uh, it can be a very uh, great asset for you as well as your, your company. All right, so let's uh, move on a little bit. So the book proposal then, this is a document that's uh, required for just about any kind of book uh, that you wanted to publish. And I understand that you might not personally want to write a book. <laughs> it might not be a dream of yours. Uh, that's fine, but I think you'll see why I chose this. Uh, type of proposal because it's I think it's really more fun and it can be uh, a little more flexible than some of these other types. But anyway, the purpose of a book proposal is simply this, persuade that publisher that you have a good idea for their line. So I don't know how much uh, you're aware of this, but there's all kinds of different publishers out there. And usually the publishers focus on one or two, maybe uh, three or four lines. This just means sort of subject areas for books. You might have a, a textbook publisher that specializes in math books, uh, let's say. Uh, you might have a publisher that specializes in science fiction, or they, they tend to be even more uh, narrowly defined than that. Uh, so part of your job starting out is to find a publisher that is interested in your type of book, and, and then you have to convince them uh, that it's worth all the money to publish this, a lot of books fail. They don't. They don't even make their the money back for the publisher. Uh, so you really have to make a pretty good case. You have a solid idea, and then try to bring whatever evidence that you can uh, to, to back that up. You can't just say, uh, "Hey, this will be a great book. I know it's going to sell a million copies." <laughs> a publisher's just going to say, "What? What makes you think that? You know, uh, where's your evidence for that claim?" So we'll be talking about this. Uh, what kind of evidence you can collect and use uh, to convince this. I mean, if the publisher just took everything, they'd go out of business in a heartbeat, right? So the, the better publishers, the publishers that have been around a while, uh, those are the ones that really know what to look for. Uh, they know what not, what kind of proposals not to accept, uh, which ones do have some promise. So uh, all, of the same, all of these same sort of concepts about adapting to an audience, knowing your purpose, uh, getting to the point, uh, that's true of book proposals, but it'd be true for any of those other proposals that are in the book and that we talked about. Uh, so here's the basic components, and I'll get more into this when we get to the instructions. 
a book, a, but any book proposal will have these features, of course, description of the book. And usually what you want is a mix, uh, especially depending on the type of book it is. And keeping in mind that the managing editor at the publisher's office, maybe they don't know very much about the technical field that you're writing about. Uh, this could be a book about calculus. Maybe the managing editor doesn't even know uh, what a derivative is. So they're going to need that simplified description uh, as well as the, the technical description. So the, you can think about it this way. The simplified description might be just sort of a lay person's description of what this book entails. Uh, so not getting into specific aspects of derivatives or <laughs> integral uh, integrals or whatever it is. Uh, you just want to keep it kind of a, at a general level. Uh, but that's going to be followed by a more technical description for people that do know enough about calculus to understand what you're talking about. So I just kind of have that in mind. Uh, two different kinds of descriptions of a book. Uh, the market overview is really crucial. This is where you're getting into who's actually out there that's going to be interested in buying your book. If you can't come up with a good audience for the book, if you're just saying, you know, I don't know anybody that would be interested in this, or I don't know if there's a, a market for the book, uh, the publisher would just say, uh, you know, see ya, bye. <laughs> uh, don't let the door uh, hit you on the butt on the way out, right? Uh, instead, you really want to have some some solid demographics there. You could say this if you're writing a book about uh, and some of you folks are into computer science, computer programming. Uh, let's say you want to write a book about C sharp programming language. Uh, well, if you think about it, you know who might who is out there in the world that might be interested in buying a book about C sharp. You don't have to be too sharp, right, to, to figure out, well, the, the people that are trying to learn the language that want to use C-sharp as part of a job, maybe they just want to learn it for as a hobby. Uh, maybe they're working on uh, business software, or maybe they want to make a game with it. Uh, you got a lot of different possibilities there for people that might be interested in buying this, this book, right? Uh, so that's really your primary book, who you're writing it for, the people who are most likely to be interested. And then the secondary audience, uh, this might be, uh, for example, let's just say you had this book about C Sharp, and really you're thinking primarily in terms of uh, uh, students in a programming class. That could be your primary audience. But maybe this is a secondary audience, meaning uh, let's just say people that want to make games, just throwing that out there. Yeah, they're not. It's not the same as being a student in a computer programming class, but nevertheless, maybe there's somebody that wants to use C Sharp to make games. They might buy the book, even though it's not specifically about games. You know, hopefully you're getting the idea here, right? There's sort of the focused group that you're a uh, focused audience, primary audience, and then you have these other groups that you can make a pretty good case that might be interested in the book. Uh, the competition section is really, really important. Uh, this is where you talk about other books similar to yours. And again, a lot of uh, novices, amateurs, they assume, well, you're better off if you don't have any competition, if you're writing a book that nobody else has uh, tackled before. That's actually a, you know, a, a bad thing because it, it kind of shows maybe there's no market for the book. Uh, no, If no other publishers have published uh, in the area, Maybe that means there's no audience for the book and they know better than to publish it. So you're actually better off if you can find a healthy number of books out there. You know, people are always looking for newer books, even if it's even if there's 15 C sharp books on the on Amazon. If they're uh, three or four years old, a lot of times people want to get the newest one. All right. So that's that's the way uh, it works. Uh, but you want to go into not just uh, what makes your book better than these other books, but it's also showing that you've done the work, research, uh, you know what else is out there, you know what these other books have done well, okay, what, what people like about these other books, because you want to do that in your book too, right? Uh, but you also know what people are complaining about, and I'll get more into how you figured this out, but you know, the short of it is you look at reviews of the book, Amazon's great for this because you can see uh, the user reviews. And if you can get a good uh, sense of what people like and dislike about each book, and you can, and you can, and you can paint that picture uh, for the publisher, it's, it's very persuasive. 
Uh, finally, uh, this is usually where, as a student, you might feel the weakest is your credentials. You know, who are you uh, to be writing a book uh, about C sharp? Or, you know, people do other books too. It could be ice fishing. <laughs> uh, I've gotten uh, books about planning uh, weddings, uh, you know, you name it. Uh, a lot of times, though, the students say, I don't really have any professional experience in this area. Uh, so it can, it can sort of be sort of hard for you. Uh, but again, just don't think this is necessarily going to make or break you. Uh, you know, if you happen to be a successful C sharp programmer, that would be a definite plus. Uh, on the other hand, there's uh, lots of C sharp. There's a lot more C sharp programmers out there than there are C sharp programmers who also want to want to write a book about it. Uh, so it, it might not be as important as you think. But you definitely would want to say uh, mention anything that you can think of that shows that you've got some. Uh, experience, some interest in the area, some training, maybe some courses you took, whatever. Uh, and then finally, the uh, chapter by chapter summary, uh, again, crucial. A lot of uh, publishers actually want to see a couple of sample chapters, but uh, for now, we're not going to worry about that. Uh, you just, I want you to think about an outline that goes chapter by chapter. So we'll get into this, but think about, uh, assume that you have about 15, 20 chapters. That's a pretty good number. And you're thinking about how you would break up this big topic, C sharp or ice fishing, planning a wedding, uh, whatever. And think about how you might break that up into say uh, anywhere from 12 to 15. Really, the more chapters you have, the better. Uh, let's just say 15 is a ballpark figure to shoot for. You know, how can you break that up? Uh, so what you want in the summary, not just the name of the chapter, although that's useful, uh, but Imagine a couple of bullet points after that uh, where you describe a little bit more you know, wh what exactly is in that chapter or going to be. It could be uh, how many pictures are you going to have in that chapter? Is this going to be an introductory chapter? Maybe this is a, a chapter with uh, sort of hands-on activities, uh, exercises or whatever. Uh, but I really, really the key is to show the publisher, uh, one, that you know you have a good plan for the whole book. And two, that you've really sort of mastered how you want to organize this book. Uh, the publisher, again, does not want to work with you if you are poorly organized or if you haven't thought through uh, how you want this book to be laid out. So uh, these are all important steps. And uh, when we get to the book proposal itself, uh, here are just some other uh, formatting issues. Of course, <laughs> the title of the book. And again, more important than you might think, uh, it's a little easier for this project because uh, I'm going to recommend anyway that you do approach this as though you were doing it for dummies book. So the title would be uh, something like uh, the dummies guide to blah, blah, blah. It's pretty easy to come up with a title. Uh, but for other books, you know, you, you have a lot more flexibility. Uh, you really have to be thinking about a title that's going to resonate with an audience. And it's always kind of a marketing spin to it. Uh, if you see six, seven books, six, seven books on Amazon, and uh, five of them have really boring titles, and one of them is creative or funny, or just sort of clever, uh, you, let me guess, you'd want to go for that clever one, right? Because it sort of shows you that maybe that author is not so boring. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's always great, isn't it, when you can enjoy something as well as learn from it? Uh, of course, number two here, contact information. And again, it's up to you. If you want to uh, put your real information there, that's fine. If you're not comfortable with that, you want to just make something up, make up an address, make up a phone number. Hey, it's it's fine. This is just a practice exercise. Do whatever you want. Uh, my, my, uh, what I'm looking for, though, is just to see if you included something. Didn't forget about it. Uh, the technical description of the book. Uh, so three good paragraphs. Uh, really getting into the nitty gritty of the book. And then that general description could be just one sentence, just really generally easy language. Don't, not trying to impress here. <laughs> just plain, in plain English, what is the book about? That's step four there. Uh, and then number five. So it's, it's, I'm sorry, it's cut off a little bit here in the video, but everyday examples of how that subject is used in society. So, if it's uh, C sharp, you could talk about that that it's used for uh, heck. That <laughs> I mean, that's used from everything from professional corporate level software, 
all the way down to hobby projects, right? Games. Uh, it'd be better if you could give some uh, some specific programs that maybe you were part of where it was used. Or you could think about ice fishing. You might mention uh, how many people ice fish. Uh, you know, how are they going to benefit from your book? You know, just a little bit about the topic. And this kind of ties into step four, uh, because again, what if I don't know C Sharp from Java, from uh, C, from Basic? <laughs> you know, maybe I don't know anything about it. So it'd be very helpful to me if I'm the one that's trying to decide whether to publish your book or not. You kind of want me to understand enough to know that C Sharp is different than these other languages. Uh, they're used for different purposes, similar purposes maybe, but there's some reason that it's out there, right? And you got to tell me that. And then finally, uh, back to six there, and we've already talked about this, the target audience, the primary audience for the book. And a lot of students ask me about number six. Uh, what should I put there? Who should the target audience be? This is what I want you to decide, right? So you could have a book about C Sharp or uh, ice fishing, again, whatever. Uh, some people like to do uh, sports, a particular sport. Uh, let's just say softball. So you could have a book about softball that could be written for kids. That's fine for this. Uh, it could be one written for uh, intramural purposes, you know, college students, uh, or could go all the way up to uh, professionals who want to join some kind of league. You could say this is an expert. This book is for experts. Uh, this book is for novices, or even this book is for people that have never done it before. They have no idea, you know, total beginners. Uh, that's up to you. You decide what you want to do for the project. Uh, these other steps, again, we talked about a lot of this, but more detail here. So you say there's five other books out there. You, you don't necessarily need to go into 50 of them, right? Just uh, pick three or five that seem to be the most significant. Who wrote them? What's the title? Uh, who published it? Uh, how expensive is it? Uh, what are the differences? So it could be that this one is uh, color, this other one's black and white, uh, this one's 300 pages, and this other one's 100 pages. Uh, this one has an ebook, uh, this other one doesn't have an ebook. Right, you're, you're really trying to look at uh, the differences between the different books as well as how your book is going to be different than those. And then this uh, second one is critical as well five specific marketable features of the book. So pick up just about any book you got lying around. Turn that book around and look at the back of that book. And you should see some bullet points there. And that's what this is. Whoever put those bullet points on the book is trying to uh, compile the most marketable aspects that they can come up with, right? So it might, in a way, this is almost kind of advertising, but it's also descriptive. So on the one hand, you're describing what is actually in the book, but it's with an eye. Uh, towards uh, convincing somebody to buy the book. So, you know, if your book has, uh, you know, 100 full color images, and uh, that could be a very marketable point, right? Uh, if your book has uh, more textbook, uh, I mean, uh, if your book has more examples or more practice exercises, uh, if your book has a unique focus that the other books don't have, uh, if your book, Maybe you are. Maybe you do have a lot of more experience in the area than these other ones. Uh, whatever it is, you, you just try to think of uh, at least five things that make your book stand out. And let's see what else we have here. Three, the date of completion submission. Uh, uh, you, just, you could just sort of make something up there. That's, that's fine. Usually book publishers like to see a sort of halfway mark. So how long do you think it'll be before you get sort of halfway done? And then a final estimate. Uh, you could just say a year, six months to a year is fine. Again, this is just kind of going through the motions with some of this stuff. Uh, the number of pages, and uh, if it was if it were double spaced or a word count. And again, it's, this is easy for you if you just go with the four dummies style because they tell you on the four dummies uh, proposal pages how many pages they're looking for and so on. So you could just put that. Uh, the number of figures, photos, and tables, again, this is going to vary depending on what you propose, right? If you're proposing a book about um, martial arts or ballet or uh, 
ballroom dancing or drawing. <laughs> Obviously, a book about drawing is going to have a lot more figures and photos in it than a book would if it was about, you know, coming back to the C sharp example. Uh, if you're writing a book about programming, I really wouldn't expect to see a whole bunch of photos in there. Uh, I would expect to see tables. I would expect to see some, uh, you know, some 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 boxes there, maybe with the some script. Uh, that would make perfect sense. If you're writing a book about statistics, uh, of course, it'd be lots of tables and, and all this stuff. Uh, and again, you want to think about making it cheaper as opposed to making it expensive. A lot of students, uh, they, they want full color, glossy, everything. Of course, that's going to be just more risky. It's going to be riskier for the publisher because it's a bigger investment. Uh, if you can get away with fewer images or black and white images, uh, there's a lot less risk and you're more likely to get published that way. Uh, and then if you do need some kind of special software, uh, you should mention that. You probably won't for our purposes, but uh, again, it's up to you. Now, every now and then I get people wanting to do uh, some form of uh, mathematics and always uh, caution them that uh, you need to think about if, you, if you're going to have equations or some of the special math notation, uh, you may or may not be able to use Microsoft Word uh, to put those in the book. You might need some kind of special software. I don't know that much about it, uh, but that's something you would have to figure out if you wanted to, to do that. Uh, some other stuff, uh, how much do you think the book will cost? Now, you can't propose this. The publisher decides. So don't say uh, your book will be sold for 30 bucks. That's not your call. Uh, that's the publisher's business. Now, all you're doing is just thinking about, you know, what do you think a customer might, might be willing to pay for the book? Uh, maybe it's from your experience. You know, if, if I wanted to learn C Sharp bad enough, uh, would I be willing to pay 60 bucks uh, for a book like that? And again, this is where you can come back to that competition section. And say, look, all these other books are at least uh, 30, uh, 30 bucks. Maybe they're hundreds of dollars. Uh, so that gives you some uh, uh, data that you can use for this first one. If, on the other hand, all the other books are dirt cheap, uh, then why would they pay all this money for yours? That'd be harder to make that case. Uh, two, uh, if there's classes that can use the book, uh, that's always good. Um, no matter what the book is, if, if it can go into a college classroom, uh, publishers love that. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, the professor, somebody like me uh, can say, yeah, you, this is a required book. Uh, you know, everybody has to buy this book and you might, they might sell a 30, 40, 50, maybe hundreds of copies just from that one class. Uh, so that could be huge. You could imagine if it's a real popular textbook, you know, how many thousands, tens of thousands. I mean, it's a huge, uh, huge money. And again, like I, you, this might surprise you to hear, but so few books make a big profit. A lot of them don't even break even, right? So, uh, and plus, the, the it's not like you have to sell a million copies to be on the bestseller list. Even if you're just selling a few hundred or a few thousand, uh, that can be really significant to a publisher. So again, examples. Uh, professional societies, uh, you know, again, this kind of depends on what you're talking about. I've had them before where people wrote about, say, the Society for Creative Anachronisms, which is uh, folks that put on armor and, and sort of practice weapons, and they sort of go out and uh, pretend like they're engaged in a medieval sword fight. Uh, well, that's sort of a society, right? And, you know, if, there, if there's hundreds of people that are part of that society, that's, that's a pretty good market thing to mention. Uh, coming back to the martial arts example, there's all kinds of uh, clubs dedicated to that. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, four, places to review or promote the book. Uh, again, trying to give the publisher an idea about marketing. If you can say that there's a couple of magazines uh, where they could advertise. Uh, for, you know, I'll just give an example. One of the things I've been interested in for a long time are the uh, are shows on Discovery Channel that have to do with uh, being a surviving out in the wilderness. Uh, that, like the, I think it's dual survival. Uh, there's uh, Bear Grylls. <laughs> I forget what his, uh, Man vs. Wild or something like this, <laughs> or uh, Naked and Afraid. Uh, all these sorts of uh, shows on television. And you might, I think that'd be a pretty good topic to write books about. And there, there's many books about it. Uh, but what I've been noticing lately, uh, when I go to uh, 
I was just at Mills Fleet Farm, and it's not like they have a huge mag. It's not a magazine store, right? But they do have magazines there. And I noticed that there were two or three magazines that were related to those shows I'm talking about. They had one that was uh, had Les Stroud. Uh, they had one with the uh, uh, who was it? Uh, <laughs> Lincoln on the name. Uh, but anyway, uh, obviously, there's some magazines out there that are sort of catering to that demographic. And if I was writing a book that had something to do with with the, being a sur- uh, wilderness survival, I would mention those magazines as a potential place uh, for them to advertise. And it also shows, hey, again, there's there's a market for the book. Look, you know, th- this magazine wouldn't be here if there weren't people interested in the topic, right? So it just makes sense. Uh, five, a list of suggested reviewers. And this this might be the trickiest bit for you if you don't know other people in the field, but uh, you know, you can, you can make some of this up if you like. Um, <laughs> maybe you know a famous, uh, yeah, but wouldn't it be great if a Les Stroud would look at the book and write a review? Uh, maybe that'll happen, probably not. Uh, but if you could think of somebody that knows enough to really give it a, a good read and, and also double as a promotional aspect. See, you always got to be thinking about the promotional side. So you might know a professor here that knows a whole lot about C Sharp and would be really an expert at reading your book and saying this is correct or this is incorrect. You know, maybe uh, he or she is an expert that way, but nobody that doesn't go to the school would know the name. So you kind of lose out on that uh, promotional tie. Uh, On the other hand, maybe the professor is very well known, and that would be great. Uh, But I'm just saying that it's better if you could find somebody that can do both. It's an expert and somebody with some name recognition, somebody that would be uh, respected enough uh, to help sell that book. Okay, so the uh, what I advise you to do first is uh, go to this, for, you can just go to Google, type in for dummies or dummies books or, or whatever, get to the dummies, for dummies website, and just start browsing the site. Uh, look at the all the different topics there are there. There's just uh, four, this beekeeping, ASVAB, which I think that's the test that people that want to go into the military take. Uh, there's ukulele for dummies, home buying kit. I mean, any of these books, they're all over the place. Uh, now, it doesn't matter if the book already exists. If if you want to write a book about, uh, what, what do we have here, U- ukulele for dummies, hey, go for it. Uh, we can just pretend like this book here doesn't exist, and you could propose uh, the same thing. Uh, if you want to specialize it more, uh, you know, sometimes people like to do fishing or hunting, and they'll uh, specialize it. They'll, they'll say something like, ice fishing for Minnesota, right? And then that kind of narrows it down a little bit so they don't have to talk about all this other stuff in their book. And uh, I think people that, you know, if you're in Minnesota, you want to learn how to ice fish, you know you're going to be ice fishing in Minnesota, you'd probably be more likely to go for that one, right? The one just for Minnesotans over just the generic one. You know, I think you can make a case for that, uh, but it's up to you. And again, you don't have to do the for dummies. If you wanted to do something for experts, uh, you could do that. But I just think it's easier if you stick to these because you have good models. Okay, I'm going to switch over now and look at the instructions for a second. All right, so yours will look a little different than this. I uploaded a PDF, but it's all the same stuff. So people are always asking me how many pages and so on. So I put this here. So the cover letter is not part of the proposal itself. It's something that goes before the proposal. And again, uh, when you submit this, just you can copy paste everything into a document. Just put it all in one PDF. That's fine. Uh, Just make sure there's some separation between the cover letters and this other bit. So anyway, the cover letter you basically the you know what is this <laughs> what are you proposing uh, just a brief summary who you are just it's kind of like all the other stuff in the proposal in a nutshell so i say uh, one page is fine for that two pages that's kind of stretching it in my opinion uh, you might go to two if you really just have two good paragraphs that's probably fine Uh, And then again, page break, and then go to this general description of the book, uh, one to three pages for this, 
the background information on the subject. Uh, again, assume the publisher doesn't even know anything about it. So ice fishing, <laughs> what the heck is that? You know, how's this different than just regular fishing? Now, where, do, where do you do this? Uh, how many people interested in this? Uh, just real background stuff. Uh, the themes of the book, uh, content, style, and, you know, again, here you want to mention, uh, are you going to have lots of uh, hands-on sort of activities? Is it going to be formal, uh, like a textbook? Or is it going to be humorous, casual? Uh, you decide. Uh, how long is it going to be? And again, the estimated number of figures and so on. Uh, the layouts. Uh, and again, with this, it'd be very helpful to go to the Barnes & Noble, go to the bookstore, go, go to the library, find a For Dummies book. Just kind of flip through it, and you'll see that it's not just all text, okay? Uh, they have little boxes here and there, uh, sort of fun facts, or, or did you know, or uh, objectives, chapter objectives, uh, maybe little quizzes you can give yourself. Uh, so kind of be creative like this. They think about some uh, little ways you can make a more creative layout. Uh, and then the organization, and, and don't just copy and paste uh, the chapter by chapter summary that's coming up later. Uh, this is just a brief description, and uh, there's no need to go into great detail there. Uh, market overview, we talked about that. Uh, competition for the book, two to three pages. And again, what, what are those books about? What do the reviews look like? The basic information, it's all here in this uh, instruction sheet. Uh, about you, a little about the author, uh, one to two pages. Uh, then we have that summary I was telling you about. So at least two to four pages with this. It's probably going to be more like the full four pages. Uh, just two or three sentences, though, about each one is fine. And then you got your uh, estimated schedule. And you don't need to get fancy with this schedule. Just, again, uh, you could just put two dates there, you could say. You could just write out a sentence that says, we, we anticipate being halfway done on uh, by this time next year. Tips and suggestions. Let's see, is there anything here I haven't talked about? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, you have to be precise about your description. Uh, you can say it's going to be around 200 pages, but you don't want to say 200 to 500 pages because, again, when you submit this, the and I'm, I don't know if you know this, but I've published, I guess, about five, five or six books at this point. So I've been through all this many times. So I'm not making this stuff up <laughs> in case you were curious. But uh, a lot of the, the, you know, the the managing editor, if you if you say the book's going to be 300 pages, but then they've gone before their board and they they said it's going to be about 300 pages, going to have about this many color photos. Uh, this many black and white photos, and so on and so forth. And uh, they've got a budget to work with. That, that board will give them a budget. Uh, I might get an advance or uh, whatever it is. But the important thing is they, they've allocated some funds. Now, if you show up at the end with 500 pages, uh, it's not like you're going to get a pat on the back for that. They're, they're going to say, okay, go out. and Now you got to cut uh, all the way down to 300 because we're not paying you for those extra 200 pages that you sort of added on. So, you know, you'd be pretty upset with that. So think about it that way. Um, it doesn't really hurt. I think it's, if you're going to, not sure, it's always better to come in a little under, I think, than, than to go over uh, just from the publisher's point of view. But, you know, it's not, it's not like an ironclad thing, but 25 pages seems about a good, a good range. If you're trying to say it might be 100 pages off, that just seems like you don't know what the, what the heck you're doing. Uh, to that competition section, uh, again, so important. I got more advice there. And you can also use this as a learning tool for yourself, right? So if you see that all these other books are doing a certain thing, that might help you to write a better proposal. Uh, you can also look at their marketable points. You know, Look at the publisher's description of the book. Uh, you can even look at the cover of the book, and uh, you could be inspired that way. Uh, let's see what else do we have there. Websites, books, about, yeah, just go to Google, type in, how do, how do I write a book proposal? <laughs> boom, 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 all kinds of stuff pops up. You can go to YouTube, watch uh, videos about it. 
Uh, there's one, uh, write a book proposal from WikiHow. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, I got a link here. I don't know if this link will be valid or what goes on with that. So again, if, if, the, if the link doesn't work, just go to Google, type in Complete Idiot's Guide. And uh, if you fish around on the page, you should see their submission guidelines. Might say for authors or uh, uh, submission guidelines, whatever. Uh, they word it differently. But somewhere on that site, they should have a thing, a page uh, with advice detailing uh, what they want to see in a proposal. Very good to look at that. Uh, the letter, just make sure that's in the full block format. I've got a link there. It's uh, just standard letter format. Uh, just keep it formal. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the number six again. Sorry this got cut off. You can read this on the site. Uh, I've got a PDF version of this. But uh, you, know, you don't want to say, I forgot to mention this earlier. I should, I should have mentioned this earlier, but... You, you can do this all by yourself if you like. You can just be an individual writing a book proposal and doing all this. Uh, but you can also collaborate with other people in the class. So what I do is you can have uh, one partner. And if you partner up with uh, somebody, then you get a 5% bonus to the whatever grade you get. Uh, or you can uh, team up with two other people. And uh, then you get a 10% bonus for that. So that, that's pretty significant. But uh, you can't have more than the two partners. And also, um, I, I had to leave it all up to you how you want to organize this collaboration. You can use uh, something like Google Docs. You know, we had a whole chapter on writing as a group. You can refer back to it. I will have a forum on our discussion board on D2L. Uh, where you can post there and say, looking for a group, you know, here's some ideas, or looking for a partner, uh, you can post it there. But I leave it all up to you, how you want to collaborate, what tools you want to use, whatever. And uh, when you're done with it, you'll just submit uh, one project for the both of you. Uh, and all this is to say, uh, with this number six step, so if you do collaborate with somebody, when you write uh, the letter, and you, you say, sincerely, uh, uh, you don't want to put everybody's name and uh, have this publisher trying to write to two or three different people or email with all this, this group. Uh, you always want to just have one point of contact. So uh, if you have a co-author, if you just have one partner, uh, what you want to do is just you, you might be the one interacting with the publisher. Uh, but what you do is you forward uh, this, the uh, relevant information on to that partner. And that way it just keeps you from getting uh, mixed signals and different people responding. Uh, it's just a way to keep everything neat and nicely organized. Okay. <laughs> I know it seems like a lot, but uh, it'll really be fun, I think, when you get into, the, into this. And again, you can choose just about anything to write about. Uh, it could be a hobby. It could be the, the sport. If you play a sport on campus, you might want to do that. I've had lots about fitness-related topics. I've had video game guides. Uh, those are always kind of in demand because there's always some new video game out there, right, that you can write about. Uh, what else? Um, I, I wouldn't recommend doing a, a cookbook. You know, it's, it's sort of hard to do those. It's, it's just a little bit too, uh, you know, I don't want to just see a bunch of recipes, basically. Uh, so with that said, you, you could do something food-related, if you like. Um, so some people have done, oh, what, what were some of them? I, I've seen books about, for some reason, the, the wedding cakes. <laughs> so you can do something like different kinds of cakes and uh, maybe get enough out of that to do a book on. Uh, but if your idea is just to have a, a collection of recipes, just try to go away, go away from that idea. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, uh, oh, you can also do fictional ones. Uh, there's some great survival books out there about zombie survival or uh, giant robot survival or uh, aliens, you know, what to do, alien abductions, a dinosaur, <laughs> a dinosaur hunting. Uh, so it's fine with me. If, if you want to be more creative and, and just sort of go into a fictional realm, hey, that's fine. Uh, if you want to be more realistic you know do something like car mechanics 
uh, changing, uh, I think you know, this is a good example. So if you just wanted to say changing tires, uh, you're not going to get a whole book out of that, right? Uh, but maybe just general, a, a book about, say, uh, general car maintenance or a college student's guide to <laughs> car maintenance. <laughs> uh, that you could talk about more than just changing tires uh, and have enough to do the whole book. And just a, one other thing I'll mention is uh, this, the, when we do the documentation project, you're not going to be writing this whole book, but I do want you to propose a whole book. Now, what you'll end up doing is just writing a couple of chapters from the, for the book, but not the whole thing. But, but again, think about it as though you were doing the whole thing. All right, I think I've hit upon everything, uh, hopefully. Uh, if not, just let me know if you have any questions. Uh, whatever it is, uh, please feel free. You can email me or you can ask me. Uh, you come by the office if you want. You can always go to the right place for help. Uh, anyway, just just don't uh, <laughs> don't just suffer with a question. I'm, I'm happy to answer. So anyway, I'll leave it here. Hope you're having a, a good time. Go to that For Dummies site, look around, and pick a topic that really uh, spikes your interest. And good luck.